Prime Minister Skerritt brushes aside opposition plans for a no-confidence motion in his handling of the economy. An appeal to the religious community to go beyond prayer in its efforts to assist Haiti in its recovery. And health authorities in the region have a fresh perspective on creating national health insurance plans for their respective countries. I am Julian Morris with the Channel 5 News. The details after this. First up, Prime Minister Roosevelt Skerritt has dismissed as a joke the intention of the opposition leader to table a motion of no confidence against him when Parliament meets on Wednesday. Andrea Louis has that story. According to the motion, the Prime Minister is mismanaging the country's economy. It states that the mismanagement of the economy is evidenced by, and I quote, rising unemployment, sharp decline in the performance of agriculture, tourism, manufacturing, construction and service sectors, and an increase in the trade deficit and a massive national debt, end quote. During a press conference on Friday, Prime Minister Skerritt said the idea of tabling a motion of no confidence against him as Prime Minister is laughable. That's my initial reaction, to laugh. Because I, I have not met, in, including the supporters of the opposition, one person who has not laughed when they've heard this, including from their own supporters, including from the, some members of the, of the parliament. They will not say so publicly, some of them, but I mean, they're laughing at this. It's, it's a joke. It's a joke. If anybody in this, in this, in, if anybody want to question any country in this world for proper management of the state finances, it will be Dominica, my friend. The Prime Minister says so far his government's track record and his leadership are highly commendable. We have financial institutions that are at our door offering us loans. There's one bank offering us $50 million US as a loan to, to, to assist. We're discussing it and we're discussing it. And also another institution, 30 million US dollars. That they're offering us, we didn't ask them for it, they're offering it to us because we have credibility. Yeah. <laughs> we have credibility. You know when the bank, you know, sometimes the bank call you and they tell you you have a credit card pre-approved? Yes. Because they, 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 they monitor your payments to, 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 the, to the thing and they see that you, 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 you use it a lot, but you also pay in time and on time, and sometimes you even credit. Or you have pre-approved loan. So we're getting pre-approved loans from financial institutions. Skerritt reaffirmed that his government is committed to developing Dominica through its prudent management of state finances. Here it is, you've been affected by a storm and you have not, you have not affected any of your existing social programs. You have, you have been able to pay public offices on time. You have been able to increase the budget to the World Criminal Festival by over a million dollars. You have resettled the entire community with three bedroom homes each. Uh, in some cases, even furniture and fixtures in these homes. We have signed a contract to build 381 homes for the people of Philip Savan. Fully financed, 381 homes with playing facilities, with public spaces, with a wonderful park that will, that will be much more attractive than the Botanic Gardens. We have, um, and we're going to be increasing you're going to see more visible construction taking place in the country. Parliament convenes on Wednesday, 19th October. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. In more major news, an appeal has been made to the religious community here to help in the relief efforts for Haiti through more than just prayer. Here again is Andrea Louis. CARICOM Chairman and Prime Minister of Dominica, Roosevelt Skerritt, wrapped up a tour of hurricane-ravaged Haiti and the Bahamas, returning to Ireland this week. In speaking to the media on Friday, Prime Minister Skerritt said that while both countries were significantly impacted by Hurricane Matthew, things are much worse in Haiti. He disclosed that CARICOM is looking to target two main areas in its attempts to help Haiti recover from the effects of the hurricane. The situation in Haiti is very grave. Um, Haiti received uh, serious uh, damage from Hurricane Matthew, particularly in the towns of Lakai and Jeremy. From, and from the CARICOM standpoint, the thinking is that we will focus on education and um, the possibility of repairing a school and also to underwrite the expenses of a school feeding program. Um, because we really need to get these school children back into school as soon as possible. Um, agriculture, we have um, mobilized um, CARDI, 
um, and we have been in touch with the Food and Agriculture Organization. I'm, I'm speaking there as, as Chairman of CARICOM um, to mobilize seeds and seedlings uh, to be airlifted to Haiti the soonest uh, because we need to ensure that Haiti can get back into agricultural production the soonest and to have short-term crops. There is also an outbreak of cholera in Haiti and the deaths associated with that disease have been recorded. Prime Minister Skerritt pointed out that money is also useful during times of post-disaster recovery. Haiti is going to need uh, a sustained commitment uh, to rebuild homes and rebuild better infrastructure to be able to withstand um, any category of hurricane in the future. So we are appealing to the to the communities, of course, the churches on Sunday and on Saturday. Um, you know, whatever tithes you would have um, raised in the church, you know, um, let us pass half of it um, to the ODM um, so that um, we can get the, 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 the items to them. Now, we are also prepared to re receive cash. And the idea would be, because cash sometimes is much more um, efficient in, in its um, disposition. So we would pass this cash on to Sidima, who could procure items out of Jamaica, for example, or the Dominican Republic, and have it transported to Haiti in a much more efficient manner. The Prime Minister had pledged 100,000 US dollars to Haiti and another 100 US thousand dollars to the Bahamas to help them with their recovery efforts. Andrea Louis, Channel 5 News. In other news, farmers in Layu are among those expected to benefit the most from the construction of a over $250,000 York Valley Bridge, destroyed back in 2011 by the collapse of the Martyr Dam. Prime Minister Skerritt, MP for St. Joseph Calvadaro, Public Works Minister Senator Miriam Blanchard and China's Ambassador to Dominica were all present at a groundbreaking ceremony on Thursday. The finished product will benefit you most, the farmers of of Layu. And to assist you, we shall be doing two things for you. One, provide you with adequate supplies of inputs, and we'll do so through your farmer group organization. And secondly, to provide you with a limited amount of financial support to defray the cost of having to traverse all the way through uh, Warner to get to your farms. And the power rep would have met you some weeks ago and discussed those issues with yourself. The Prime Minister also announced that funds were available for the reinstatement of the Layu Park Layu Valley Roads. The Layu project is one aspect of a very ambitious plan for Dominica's infrastructure. We have given the mandate to the Minister for Public Works in the Cabinet to employ additional engineers of varying qualifications and expertise to assist the ministry with the designs and the quantities of the many interventions which we have to um, put in place in this country. And also, we'll be engaging a regional slash international engineering firm who will be here, representatives will be here from the 19th of October to assist the Ministry of Public Works with the designs of many important and critical pieces of infrastructure so that we can have work started in a more efficient manner. Because as the Minister of Finance, I can say to you that we have funds to improve the infrastructure in our country. Not all of the funds, but we have, thank God, um, some funds to be able to improve the infrastructure in this country. The York Valley project is being done in two phases, the demolition of the existing one-lane bridge and the construction of a two-lane bridge. Meantime, Member of Parliament for St. Joseph Constituency, Kelvadaru, has told Layu farmers that he was committed to seeing the project through. The York Valley Bridge is critical to farm access in the Layu Valley area. Daru has also appealed to Kahum farmers, reassuring them that they have not been forgotten. Just this week, I had a meeting with the Minister of Public Works and the staff to discuss the, the progress on that road. And very shortly, we will commence actual works on the Kahum Road. And again, a commitment has been made by the Prime Minister in the budget of this year to provide $2 million towards the development and complete rehabilitation of the Kahom Road from the Mero end all the way up to the Cuba Heights. 
So this is a commitment that we have made and we will ensure that the works are done. It's expected that skilled workers in the Layu area will be employed in the construction of the York Valley Bridge. Rest assured that when this, when the, as this project is ongoing, we will engage locals on the project, and some have already been engaged. I have met with the, with the contractors, and we have put a plan in place to engage the locals, the skilled men, the laborers on the project to be part of this project and to own this project, because this is our project, my dear friends. The Minister for Public Works has outlined what the York Valley Bridge will entail and the accompanying works. Ultimately, it's more than just building a bridge. The new reinforced concrete bridge will comprise of three 18-meter spans, or a total of 54 meters. Its total width will be 8.5 meters, including one meter wide sidewalks on either side. Therefore, two-lane traffic will be comfortably accommodated on the 6.5 meter carriageway. The design also provides for the construction of road approaches to the bridge, road markings, and signage. The firm, China Railway 14th Bureau Group Company Limited, has been engaged by the Chinese government for the construction of this new bridge and the associated works. This is the first project that Chinese Ambassador Li was involved in after his arrival here just under three years ago. The contractor of this project, the China Railways 14th Bureau Group Cooperated, is one of China's top construction companies with vast experiences and expertise in infrastructure projects. With understanding and cooperation of all of you, I have no doubt that they will do a good job in delivering a brand new Turin Bridge in due time that would not only serve the community for a long time to come but also stand the test of time or whatever weather sometimes might throw at it. Bridges connect people and communities across rivers, valleys and enable businesses to flourish. May this project be a great success. May the friendship and cooperation between our two countries which connect our two peoples continue to develop and deepen in the days and years to come. You're watching Channel 5 News. More news after this. The French distributor of fuel and lubricants, Rubis, has additional investment plans for the region after a 600,000 US dollar investment to rebrand local stations. Even if today its chief executive officer is boasting that the company has exceeded its business plan results, he says it took his team over a year to turn the financial operations of Dominica around. Rubis, formerly Texaco, is observing five years of operations in the Caribbean. The company manages 230 service stations in 16 territories in the region. Rubis observed its fifth anniversary with a cocktail reception at Fort Young Hotel Thursday night. Since 2011, we have made huge uh, investments in our terminals as well. So if you look at our terminals today, they look a lot better and they have a lot more capabilities than they had in 2011 when we got started. And our cumulative investment here in Dominica and the Eastern Caribbean, excluding, uh, excluding of course, the huge investment that we made to buy the operations, uh, uh, over this five-year period has been in excess of 50 million US dollars. And that investment has required uh, also increasing uh, the number of employees that we employ. Nicole says the company will continue to seek opportunities to enter new markets. One of its most recent business moves was to double its market share in the Martnik Sara fuel refinery in 2015. And we now have 71% uh, ownership share of that important regional refinery. Not only that, but we are the operators of the uh, Sarah refinery in Martinique. Uh, we have done a lot, but uh, you know, what, what comes next? What are we planning to do in 2016 and beyond? So earlier this year, we announced the acquisition of Bermuda Gas. It's uh, the largest LPG distributor in Bermuda. We have developed a new fuel farm at the Argyle International Airport in uh, St. Vincent. And as soon as the airport officially opens, 
That's one new location that Nicholson will have to worry about. And we will also build a new uh, fuel facility at the uh, uh, St. Lucia Hewanora International Airport. And we, we expect to be selling fuels there by the end of 2017. And health authorities in the OECS have a better handle on the process towards creating national health insurance plans in their countries. This, as OECS health ministers and the permanent secretaries wrapped up a two-day meeting of the Council of Health Ministers and the Pharmaceutical Procurement Service Policy Board on Thursday. Health economist Dr. Stanley Lalter provided guidance to the meeting on how to go about developing national health insurance schemes in the respective countries. Dr. Lalter has over 20 years of research, consulting, teaching and a direct public health policy experience in the Caribbean. Well, I pointed out to them that you really have to make sure and be very clear, what is your vision for your health system? What is your vision for health financing? National health insurance is going to help you with several things to ensure persons have better access to care, both in the public and the private sector. It will also help you to ensure that you maximize the capabilities of the public health sector as well as the private health sector because all of those benefits can be included in your national health insurance benefits plan. So there are several good things one can look at. The other side of it is that this takes careful planning. This takes a lot of effort. It takes a dedicated team of people. But it also takes a lot of uh, uh, political leadership to ensure that it is going to be done and done properly. It would also take a lot of financing in the research and development stage stages towards setting up national health insurance schemes. Having started it, it pays for itself. And that's the principal thing about it, that NHI now provides a mechanism to pay for health services because you will be getting money from contributions from individuals, some monies from government, but also you can have uh, small co-payments for some of the services. Antigua has started the process and the health minister there in January told residents of that OECS country that the system would be set up in 18 months. Some countries have already started like Antigua and the Virgin Islands. The British Virgin Islands has just started their plan and they have been through their initial challenging periods. Uh, they have had a lot of successes and now they want to go uh, the next stages to, to make significant improvements in their offerings, their benefit package, the coverage of the population. So, so there are changes which can be made over time to make sure that you are constantly improving and benefiting the population. And despite some initial challenge, especially from persons who already had private insurance, the big segment of the population is benefiting the providers of health services are also satisfied that they're being paid on time, they're getting more business. The Dominica government has pledged $5 million for a pilot national health insurance project. And while some may say governments are responsible for creating an enabling environment for youth employment, one local youth here is helping other young people get jobs. Especially for the summer break, I want to give the youth a chance to earn their money and work hard for their money and things and give them a sense of um, independence. Um, give them a chance, give them a chance to earn a dollar. And do you plan to um, employ more people? Definitely, definitely. I mean, uh, first of all, I cannot do it myself, so um, I need the help, I need, I need good workers, but good workers, hard workers, though, definitely. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I plan to expand, I, I want to get another, another branch down in Kingfield, another branch up in the college, and definitely I will need more workers. So. Okay, and what do you look for in your workers apart from hard workers? I know loyalty is a key factor. De definitely loyalty, but um, dedication, hard working, um, uh, definite loyalty, mm -hmm. yes. Um, and you have to have the drive, ambition, you know what I mean? You want to, you have, a, and I need people that um, have the passion. You have to have the passion, man. I don't, I don't really need people to come just for a, 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 a picture. You have to have passion. I, because remember, I don't know everything. So if, it's, if something like one of my um, employees knows or will help, something that could help the business to go forward, please bring it through. I don't need no selfish people around my team. I need um, people that that's together, um, have passion, love, and definitely loyalty. Loyalty is a big key for me and honesty. When you began, 
who did you receive um, assistance from? Because I see that NDFD seems to be a major yeah, help. Definitely, definitely. NDFD they have helped me tremendously. I mean, man, those, those guys, trust me, they, they helped me a lot. So I have to be um, gratitude to them. And not, not just in, in, in um, finance, but they definitely helped me um, as friends, as, as uh, advising. Yeah, they definitely helped me a lot. Desmond Joseph reporting for Channel 5 News. And as anyone who's visited the World Creole Music Festival in recent years knows, the scene undoubtedly has room for innovation and improvement in certain areas. Therefore, preparations for the following acts will take place immediately and patrons will be directed to the village near the bar area to be entertained by local artists. Representative of the DFC, Simeon Joseph, gives details. In the past, we had an aspect of the festival for, called the food court. For the first two or three years, it was basically what you would call an experience of an experimental nature. Um, we're happy this year that DFC has accepted the proposal to make it an integral and the main part of the festival. So it will no longer be considered the side acts as you know it was before, but you could call it a, 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 a second aspect to the festival. And so from this year, we're going to term it the village with all the cultural highlights and high points that one would expect in a real cultural village. Joseph says this change is to support the main stage. For that reason, cultural acts have been eliminated from the main stage. As soon as the main stage dies down, the village will just strike up one time. We'll have a relay system, hopefully, whereby whatever happens in the village will be broadcast on um, wide screens in the festival city itself or you could say the grounds area so that persons who do not go to the village can sit and see, have the same experience as persons who will be in the village. We are happy to announce that there are a number of local bands, a number of local groups, a number of young up-and-coming artists who have agreed to collaborate with us in that venture and young DJs. So this year we are happy to announce that we have virtual band Teokest and True Rhythm, virtual band from Grand Fort, Teokest from Rosa Area and Environs, and True Rhythm from Portsmouth, who will be the bands on the main stage. We decided to use one band per night, and I think I have to say that, because previously we tried two or three bands per night, but it was very hectic, and the bands complained that they did not enough, have enough time. The Kalinago group will not be incorporated into this year's activities as they have been over the last three years. Welcome to this segment of our chit chat or Friday chit chat and with me is Marcel Harrigan of the uh, Cadence Lipso committee. You guys have been working real hard and tomorrow, Saturday, you're giving an opportunity to the public, the patrons to perhaps get cheaper tickets. That's correct. Currently the price of the tickets is $60 and at the gate it could be $70. But what you do offering tomorrow morning from 10 to about 4, 4.30, we're offering a special on the tickets for only $50. $50, that's the cheapest show right now for the season. And um, we're just asking everyone to come on down to the main branch of the, of the NCCU to get your tickets, only $50. You may not get a second opportunity to get it at $50. So people should take advantage of that? Definitely, people should take advantage of that because um, in terms of the value you're getting, you're getting a free-in-one show. We have the individual segment, 11 artists will take part in that segment. We have five bands, again, taking part in the same Calislip to show as well as we'll be featuring Gordon, Gordon. Henderson. Fantastic. So we're getting free for the price of one and only $50 tomorrow morning in front of the NCCU building. And it's not just going to be a dry experience of buying a, a reduced price um, ticket. There's going to be some ambience there. Oh, yes, 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 definitely. So we're going to have live performances by the artists themselves. Um, you'll be able to buy some beers from Kubuli. There's a special also on the beers as well as Digicel 2 will have some specials on phones and stuff like that. So from 10 tomorrow morning, from all 10 the way up to... 4, 4.30, maybe by straight to 5 o'clock. But we're inviting everybody to come on down to get your, your ticket for only $50. It might just be your only chance to get it at that basement price. Thank you very much, Marcel Harrigan of the NCCU Canada Sleep So uh, Committee. Sports is next with Kenny Williams.
We bowl off with cricket because Vishal Singh's career best of 161 and Rakeem Cornwall's seven wickets helped West Indies A beat Sri Lanka A by 333 runs in their second unofficial test match on Friday. Coming from 36 for two in 11 overs on Thursday, Sri Lanka A was bowled out for 147 in 48.2 overs. Jeffrey van der See, 47, and C. Asalanka, 36. Delron Johnson, Kemar Roach, Kiran Joseph and Gudakesh Moti took two wickets each for West Indies. The final score on the final day of the second test, West Indies A 509 for 9 declared and 216 for 3 declared, Sri Lanka A 245 and 147 all out in 48.2 overs. The series is now tied at 1 all. Back with more cricket. After finishing day one of their first test against West Indies on 279 for one, Pakistan declared on 579 for three on Friday. Azhar Ali scored an unbeaten 302 with Sami Aslam adding 90, Babar Azam 69 and Asad Shafiq 67. Trailing by 510 runs and having nine wickets in hand at the end of the second day, the West Indies scored 69 for one in 22 overs. Craig Brathwaite made 32, Leon Johnson 15 and Darren Brathwaite. 14. Meantime, England women defeated West Indies by 112 runs in the third ODI on Friday. England took first knock and scored 220 all out. Lauren Winfield made 79 and Natalie Shiver 58. Shaquana Quinton picked up 3 for 36 for West Indies. Set 221 to win, West Indies fell short and was bowled out for 108. No West Indies batswoman topped Shaquana's 21 nor Deandra Dottin's 20. In football, there were a few changes made in the 2016 DFA Flow Premier League matches carded for the weekend. On Saturday at 4, it will be Northern Concrete and Steel Bombers versus Petro Caribbean Point Michelle at Benjamins Park. Sajiko Southeast will take on Wacky Rollers at 5 p.m. at Windsor Park Sports Stadium. In another doubleheader on Sunday at Windsor Park, Middleham United will battle RIC Kensborough from 3 to be followed by defending champion Central Cooperative Credit Union Dublin Football Club against rivals Caribbean Cool Harlem United at 5 5 p.m. More sports now. A team of 14 boys and 14 girls will leave for Guadeloupe on Sunday to take part in the International Handball Federation Caribbean Tournament where they will compete against the regional rivals from October 18 to 22. The male team is in Group B with Martinique, Trinidad and Tobago and St. Kitts and Nevis. The female in Group D with Guadeloupe, Trinidad and Tobago and Haiti. The male team will play St. Kitts and Nevis in their first match at 9 on Tuesday. The female squad is also scheduled to play on on Tuesday against Haiti at 12. Pedaling our way to the cycling scene, we can tell you Dominican cyclists will come together once more as the National Cycling Association hosts another road race on Sunday. The event is scheduled to run from Dublin to Corleo and will feature top cyclists from around the island. The previous competition ran from Rosso to the Layou Bridge and back, where Hayden Mills came first, followed by Chester Leta and Garen Ducre. The three will be hoping for similar performances, if not better, in Sunday's event as the association attempts to bring added exposure to the sport. The race begins at 4 p.m. Finally, in results from the Soka Rum Dominate 300 Domino League semifinals on Thursday, in Game 1, Martian 81 does 3 points, Green City 67 does 2 points, and Arms 59 does 1 point. Game 2, Baghdad 78 does 3 points, Riders 73 does 2 points, and High Roller 64 does 1 point. In the final game, Dolphins 81 does 3 points, Hurt Them 78 does 2 points, and Marboy 007 74 does 1 point. The final is carded for Sunday and will feature Martian, Baghdad, and Dolphins. Starting time is 6 p.m. That's all the sporting highlights for now. I am Kenny Williams. Do have yourself an awesome weekend. Coming up, your weather forecast. Hello, good evening. Welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I will be your presenter for this evening. 
Farah Rock career. A weak high pressure system was the dominant feature today, which resulted in generally partly cloudy skies across Los Angeles. However, a weaker tropical wave is expected to move across the islands later tonight into tomorrow. Earlier visible satellite imagery showed some few patches of low level clouds traversed across Los Angeles and earlier radar imagery of this afternoon indicated a few scattered showers dispersed across the Lesser Antilles. Well, weak unstable conditions due to the tropical wave which I mentioned earlier may produce partly cloudy to cloudy skies tonight with a few scattered showers and these conditions will persist into tomorrow. Maximum temperatures will peak up to 32 degrees Celsius. The marine forecast tomorrow well sea conditions will be moderate and waves are expected to be up to seven feet. Small craft operators and CB30 are asked to exercise some caution. Let's look ahead now into the next three days. Well, as I said, a weak tropical wave will affect weather conditions tomorrow Saturday. Partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers can be expected. And on Sunday and Monday, occasionally cloudy skies with a few scattered showers can be expected. Let's look at what happening or what will happen rather in the Caribbean islands tomorrow. The northern portion of the Lesser Antilles may enjoy some partly cloudy skies. Occasional cloudy skies expected for the central portion of the islands. The southernmost portion of Lesser Antilles may experience some cloudy skies with some showers and possible thunderstorm activity. Let's take a look now at the international city forecast. Again, beautiful sunny skies for the city of New York. Partly cloudy skies for Beijing and both Miami and Caracas may very well experience cloudy skies with some showers and possible thunderstorms and the city of London may experience some cloudy skies with some rain. The sun will rise tomorrow at 5.57 a.m. and will set at 5.45 p.m. Please remember we are in hurricane season to keep abreast with your weather information. You could always visit our website at weather.gov.dm or call our weather hotline at 447-5555. Join us next time for your next weather broadcast. Thank you. To end the news, the headlines again. Prime Minister Skerritt brushes aside opposition plans for a no-confidence motion in his handling of the economy. An appeal to the religious community to go beyond prayer in its efforts to assist Haiti in its recovery. And health authorities in the region have a fresh perspective on creating national health insurance plans for their respective countries. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com. You can also access our past newscasts on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Julian Morris. And to all viewers around the world, thanks for watching.